Kate Garber and Chris Grunter are here, the former and current chairs of the ASHG Communications Committee. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having us. So let's talk communications and really how critical it is for members to communicate. Yeah, we're seeing that today. In fact, in the New York Times, there was a story by Amy Harmon talking about how some of the geneticists, and it quoted a number of ASHG members, are seeing their work used in ways they never intended it to be. So it's critical for them to communicate how their work actually, what it means and, and how it could be interpreted properly. But we also see on a somewhat lighter note, we see a lot of communications where we want to get out and talk to people about what we're doing. So I'm talking in a session in a little bit about genetic literacy. We, we want the public to understand what we're doing and understand the importance of what we're doing. It's also important because we rely on NIH funding. We rely on Congress people to approve that funding. So we need to make sure they know what's going on. And, and also it's fun. You also talk about the importance of data visualization. Explain. Right, right. So um, data visualization is a really important aspect of science communication that it's kind of easy to overlook sometimes. So you know, it's easy to pull out your PowerPoint templates and just keep showing the same bar graph over and over again. And I think we've probably already yep. seen those yep. bar graphs a few times in this meeting. But the use of a picture can really help you connect with your audience. So it can help get across your message to your scientific audience quite uh, effectively. And it can also help you reach a broader non-scientific audience. Um, and if a picture is worth a thousand words, I think it can help uh, your message stick in somebody's head a little bit longer than a bullet point list of facts. So that's just one thing, but when we have this idea of thinking outside the box in terms of communication, you have a workshop <laughs> with specific right. steps that can really help people. Right, so we're holding a workshop on Thursday at two o'clock and the ASHG Communications Committee worked hard to put this together. We have a couple of experts on genomic data visualization from the IGV browser and the UCSC genome browser, and then the communications committee members themselves pulled together some tips and tricks for maximizing your message through visualization. It's so important to share that research. I think it might give other people ideas. It might help bring people together. You have some tips to try to facilitate that as well. Absolutely. So the first thing I would say is find a medium that you're comfortable with and use that. So for example, I am all over Twitter. I love Twitter. Kate, not so much with that. So, <laughs> and, and just don't feel the pressure to do something that is not natural to you. That, that's not going to work. But also I would suggest look at people who are doing things that you like and that you admire and think about how you can do some of that in your work. So that's what I do. I see people who are doing stuff and go, oh, that's kind of cool. I'd like to steal some of that and use that to talk about, in my case, autism spectrum disorder, which is what I work on. Um, and the third thing I would say is is that ASHG does have a communications committee. It also has a communications office who are great and will help you talk with reporters or anyone else you need. So I would take advantage of that. Great. Well, thank you, ladies, because it's important to get this message out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>